If you've been on Netflix recently, you might have seen the buzz around the documentary Trainwreck Poop Cruise, chronicling the infamous Carnival Triumph incident. For thousands of passengers, a dream vacation turned into a nightmare of darkness when an engine fire caused a breakdown in the ship's systems, leading to limited food, poor conditions aboard, and yes, overflowing toilets. It's a stark and frankly gross reminder of what happens when the complex systems on a floating city break down. That documentary gave us an uncomfortable look at the worst case scenario, but what about the other 99.9% of the time, when everything is working as it should? The toilet flushes, you wash your hands, and you go on with your day at sea, perhaps enjoying the sun or a delicious meal. Most of the time, we don't even think twice about what happens to our waste once it's gone. We assume systems are in place, and frankly, we are grateful it's not our problem. But on a cruise ship, we're talking thousands of flushes every single day. So someone has to deal with it. The big question is, what exactly do they do with all that poop? Passenger ships today come in all shapes and sizes from small luxury yachts to massive vessels carrying thousands. When you have that many people on board, far from land-based infrastructure, the ship must operate as its own self-sufficient entity. A cruise ship needs to generate its own power, clean water and climate control to keep everyone safe and comfortable. Crucially, it also has to manage all of the waste produced by those on board, from food and packaging to the focus of today's video, the waste water. Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Chris Frame, a maritime history author and lecturer, and also host the Expert Crew Show. You can find all the details in the description below. In the early days of steamships, waste was simply thrown overboard. While this sounds appalling by today's standards, it wasn't quite the environmental catastrophe it would be now. Think about it, in the 1830s and 1840s, passenger capacities were much lower than they are today, and the wastewater produced per person was significantly less. Still, it's a pretty bad way to handle waste. Early steamers didn't have flushable toilets. Sewerage was often handled using manually emptied commodes or chamber pots. Bathing on board was also limited, so the volume of wastewater was far lower. And unlike today, microplastics didn't exist, nor did many of the harsh chemicals that we now use for washing and cleaning. Chemicals that are devastating for our ocean environments. But as time went on, amenities improved. Yet surprisingly, very little changed regarding the sewage disposal for several decades. While the act of discharging waste into the sea remained, the method of dumping was upgraded for lack of a better term. From the late 19th century, liners began to pump wastewater out of the ship instead of simply tipping it over the side. While this made it less visible, it was still essentially just being thrown overboard. Consider a ship like the Titanic, renowned in 1912 as one of the finest liners of her day. Passengers and crew were estimated to produce around a tonne of sewage daily from the many toilets and wash basins and bathrooms. However, on the Titanic, the sewers drained directly through holes in the ship's side into the ocean. These discharge points, located just above the waterline, were almost consistently releasing sewage and other dirty water into the sea. This system was not adjustable, meaning sewage left the ship untreated whether it was at sea or in port. Clearly, this couldn't continue indefinitely. As environmental awareness grew, efforts were finally made to improve waste storage and discharge processes on board ships. Today, modern cruise ships feature sophisticated onboard water treatment systems. Think of them as scaled down versions of the water treatment plant you will find in a major city designed to fit within the ship's hull. This advancement is critical given the scale of cruising today. For example, the largest cruise ships, such as Royal Caribbean's Giant Oasis class, are estimated to generate around 210,000 gallons of sewage, referred to as black water, every single week. That's nearly 794,000 litres. They also produce over a million gallons, or 3.7 million litres, of grey water, which includes laundry water and water from the sinks and showers. If all of this went directly into the sea, untreated, as in the days of old, it would be an environmental disaster of epic proportions. The treatment and discharge of wastewater today is governed by MARPOL, an international maritime organisation regulation. MARPOL restricts where ships can discharge treated water and sets levels of treatment ships must adhere to. While there have sadly been instances of numerous cruise ships breaching these regulations, the majority follow them closely. Failure to do so incurs heavy fines if you're caught, 
and significant public relations damage can occur, as we've seen in the past. So back on board the ship, when toilets flush or water is used in the showers, sinks and laundries, the used water is sent to ballast tanks at the bottom of the ship. Black water, or sewage, is kept separate from the grey water. The black water undergoes a treatment process, while grey water receives less intensive attention. The black water is routed through the ship's sewage treatment facility, typically located near the engine room. Here it is first skimmed to remove any larger obstacles. After this, it's transferred to an oxygen-rich bacteria tank. These helpful bacteria accelerate the decomposition of the sewage. Following this, it moves to a settlement tank. This allows the heavier items that made it through the process to settle to the bottom, while the lighter, cleaner water is siphoned off for sterilization, usually using UV treatment or chlorine. At the end of this multi-stage process, the treated water is sent to another storage tank. It is then discharged only when the ship is in an area outside of the restricted zones as defined by MARPOL and local regulations. Now what about the grey water? This includes your shower and sink water, and it receives a lighter treatment. Many ships will skim this water to remove obstacles. However, because it doesn't contain the dangerous bacteria found in raw sewage, grey water isn't required to be treated with the same rigour as black water. It's generally stored and discharged when the ship is in a geographical location that permits it. This practice does raise concern. While grey water lacks harmful sewage-related bacteria, it still contains microplastics and chemicals from shampoos and conditioners. Many areas worldwide are tightening discharge regulations to protect natural environments from these pollutants. And frankly, cruise lines should do more to ensure that the treatment of this water is taken into account when new ships are built. So next time you're at sea, you'll have a bit of a better appreciation for what happens when you press that flush button, and appreciate the systems that exist to reduce the chance of a sanitation disaster like we saw on Carnival Triumph. While today's systems are robust, the 2013 Carnival Triumph incident reminds us what happens when things go wrong. A fire in the engine room caused a complete loss of power and propulsion. Suddenly, the toilet stopped working, and raw sewage began to back up into passenger areas, creating a major health hazard. This is why the media quickly dubbed it the poop cruise. Passengers endured days at sea without proper sanitation, limited food, and sweltering conditions, waiting to be towed back to port. It is unlikely to happen to you, but this is a stark reminder, and an unpleasant one at that, that even with the advanced systems, a ship relies on every component working together. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, you might enjoy my How Ships Work playlist. And don't forget to tune in to the Expert Cruise Show, where Anthony Davis and myself talk about all the things to do with cruising, including tips, hints, and hacks on how to get the best out of your cruise. As always, a special thank you to our channel members who help make these videos possible. And until next time, I hope to see you on board.